and welcome to Pitt Street Research. My name is Stuart Roberts, and I'm one of the co-founders of our firm. And joining me from Melbourne on the afternoon of Tuesday, the 28th of May, 2024, is Dr. Rebecca McWalter, who's the new CEO, or soon to be CEO, currently Chief Operating Officer. I'm jumping the gun there, Rebecca, of, <laughs> of Chimeric uh, Therapeutics, ASX CHM. Rebecca, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Stuart. Thank you so much for having me. Right, I'm going to I'm going to call you the CEO anyway, and hopefully okay. that that makes it a fait accompli. But the I, I think the stated intention is for you to transition into the CEO role, right? That's correct. Yes. All right. Eventually. Mm -hmm. Chimeric Therapeutics is an unusual company. Uh, started with with just one product in the CAR T space, which mm -hmm. people who know life sciences will know is is um, uh, is genuinely uh, interesting. With a product that your chairman uh, had sourced from. Uh, City of Hope Medical Center in Los Angeles. Um, it's now expanded into three different programs, of which I think the third of which, Core NK, is potentially the company maker, in, in my opinion. But um, mm -hmm. you're the you're the CEO to be. You think they're all good, right? Of course, I think they're all good, and I think there's probably uh, three main reasons I joined Chimeric. But one of them is for our main asset, CDH17, which is a CAR T for solid tumors uh, indicated in gastric cancers, which is very exciting. Right. Um, so let's let's just talk about CAR T for a second. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about CAR T since the the, the first of them uh, was approved several years ago. Um, explain to us in layman's terms why CAR T is so powerful as a treatment for cancer. CAR T is so powerful because we take your cells, we re-engineer them to teach the immune system how to fight cancer. So it's basically your cells fighting the cancer. Um, and hopefully in remission. Okay. So um, uh, some billion dollar uh, products beginning with uh, Novartis's have been created out of the CAR-T space and uh, it's contributed to some uh, Nobel Prize winning work as well. Um, your little contribution is a CAR-T that uh, uh, uses an interesting peptide called CLTX. I mm -hmm. learned that it's, uh, it's originally found in uh, a scorpion native to the Middle East, this particular peptide. You're trying it out in glioblastoma, which has got to be one of the more difficult cancers to treat, uh, a brain cancer with a very short uh, survival period. What I learned looking at the literature is that CLTX has exquisite specificity for glioblastoma cells. Um, that must explain why you got 55% disease control rate in the small phase one study that you've done. That's correct. Um, and we've moved into phase 1B now um, in uh, the US, which is very exciting. And we're hoping to uh, get to dose expansion study, which means dosing at a higher dose to see how much glioblastoma we can kill. Right. So you, you took it up to about uh, uh, to the highest dose in the phase 1A, um, just about no uh, toxicities at all. Um, uh, it's a little bit tricky to deliver, I imagine, given uh, we're talking about a brain cancer here. Uh, what's the um, what's the challenges that you're going to face in this phase 1B? Yeah, so the biggest challenge that we have, it's a very particular procedure. So we're injecting the cells directly into the brain, and there's only a handful of neurosurgeons who are capable to do this process. Uh, I learned that there's perhaps only one in Australia who can do it. Um, so it becomes a little bit of a challenge, and there's lots of glioblastoma patients all around the world, um, but the procedure seems to be a little bit fiddly. So it's my job to take a look at that and see how we can make it better. All right, but subject to delivery, uh, we've, we've got a pretty powerful um, uh, uh, CAR T therapy. And is it fair to say one of the few in development specifically for a brain cancer? That's correct, yes. Uh, I haven't seen the latest data uh, in the last week, but um, for glioblastoma, we're definitely a front runner. Right. And uh, I, I shouldn't be astounded, but it, it, temozolomide, which is an old, old drug, is still the standard of care for, for glioblastoma. So if we, if we, at the kind of uh, uh, disease control rate you're talking about, we're potentially a contender to be the next big thing. I Well, I hope so, but we'll see how this phase one pans out. Okay. Um, let's stick with another uh, phase one, uh, CHM2101. Uh, you're targeting uh, CDH17, and we're going after uh, col colorectal cancer, uh, some gastric cancers, and um, uh, the, uh, the net uh, neuroendocrine tumors, the ones that got uh, the late, uh, great Steve Jobs. Uh, tell me about what's going on in, in that program now that you've reached phase one slash two. So this is a very exciting program, and this is an asset out of the University of Pennsylvania, or UPenn for short, and they have an amazing track record of having... Birthplace place of CAR-T, so you've gone, you've gone straight back to the source. That's exactly right. Um, so uh, very exciting target, and CDH17 is... Um, 
sort of the prime target for gastric cancers and it's basically covered all over the top of the cancer. So the CAR-T can't see anything else. Um, and the animal data that was presented in Nature Cancer in 2022 looks amazing. So this will be the very first time that this target's been tested in humans. And the site um, that we have, the first site in the US is active and enrolling in the US. Uh, so I hope to share some good news soon about the first patient being dosed. But everything's tracking to plan. Uh, and we're going to go after some nasty cancers as well. Okay. Um, now we get to what I think is the real company maker. Uh, not long ago, uh, you got hold of the Core NK platform from uh, Case and Western uh, Reserve University in Cleveland. Um, uh, people have been talking about natural killer cells as uh, potentially quite powerful cancer immunotherapies for a while. We're talking the innate immune system. So you, 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 you're you bringing in the big guns uh, from, from that part of, of the immune system to, to deal with cancer. But up until now, everyone's been working on these fiddly um, uh, tailored therapies. You've potentially got some expansion technology that's so powerful. You can you can expand a, a, an initial um, uh, uh, donor batch ten uh, well ten thousand fold. Yeah. And we're talking about the potential for universal um, uh, universal delivery uh, without having to personalize NK. So this is the very exciting asset, as you mentioned, and uh, this was the holy grail when I was a baby PhD student at Monash University to create an off the shelf like, product. Like such last as this year, one. right? You you yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, last year, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to create an off-the-shelf product, um, something that solves a lot of the uh, issues that we see with CAR-T where you're manufacturing for the patient individual batches, uh, this really solves that problem and, and has a really great result. So um, I'm very impressed with the Core NK platform and I'm happy with the two Phase 1B trials that are, are tracking along right now. We've got a great partnership with Case Western, where the asset's from, and then MD Anderson Cancer Centre, which is a very uh, familiar name to most of you, uh, approached us uh, to use the asset, and um, that trial's ticking away as well, which is very great. Right. So let's go back to that um, that, that phase one data. This was initiated by the, the, the Case Western folks prior to um, this platform coming into, into Chimeric. Uh, and when that data became available a few months later, everyone was very pleasantly surprised. Mm. Very pleasantly surprised. Okay, so Rebecca, um, you're a relatively recent arrival in um, uh, CEO land for, for ASX listed companies, but you've been around the, the life sciences space for some time. You and I were introduced, I believe, as, as long as 10 years ago. Correct. Um, uh, when you were working for, for, for Big Pharma. Tell us about your background. Uh, so as I mentioned, I have a PhD in cell therapy and regenerative medicine from uh, Monash University here in Melbourne. Uh, and soon after I completed my PhD, I quickly joined industry, uh, working for some big names like GlaxoSmithKline, Amgen Australia and Amgen in the US. Uh, and then uh, returning home from the US, uh, I was really lucky enough to be part of a spin out called Bioveritive. Um, and it was my job to grow that business into a $20 million business, which we were successful at. Um, and that was acquired by Sanofi, um, so one of the many acquisitions I've been part of. And then more recently, I've spent some time at Novartis um, Pharmaceuticals, which is a Swiss-based big pharma, uh, looking at high-profile partnerships for our industry, which has been very exciting. Right. Um, you and I first met um, uh, back in the Amgen days when you were working in their um, uh, in their, their their bone franchise. Since mm -hmm. since those days, of all the the fields you've worked in uh, of medicine, obviously uh, uh, cancer, you've had a bit of training in within Novartis recently. Um, but the bioverative part of the story isn't one I'm familiar with. Tell us about how you created a twenty million dollar business there. Yeah. So um, bioverative was a spin out from Biogen, and they spun out their rare blood disorder assets. So for hemophilia, beta thalassemia. Um, and cold agglutinin disease, which is very rare. Um, but basically we were tasked with uh, establishing an Australian affiliate. We had no registered molecules, no reimbursement, um, and we really had to find a fast path to market. So uh, I spent a lot of time in Canberra negotiating with the federal government and also in New Zealand, negotiating with the New Zealand government uh, to try to get these medicines listed. Uh, in, the mean, in my spare time, I set up three phase three trials uh, for sites in Australia. And interestingly, um, one of those is now finally complete after six or seven years ago, um, which is really great. Um, but it was a very hard job um, to try to make something out of nothing. And I think I'm in the exact same spot again, um, except I've got three amazing assets at Chimeric. Well, let's talk about that. When you were do doing your uh, due diligence prior to joining Chimeric, what was it you could see that was attractive uh, to you? 
So a few things. I think the platform that I used in my uh, PhD was really attractive because I knew uh, I knew all about that, and um, I, I've always been passionate to see that through to market. And I never thought I'd get an opportunity to be able to see that through to the market, which is so exciting um, to pick up some work that I that I left many many years ago. Uh, the other thing was um, the exciting target for CDH17. And so, as I mentioned, this will be the first time it's been tested in humans. And to be part of something like that um, is really once in, a, once in a career kind of experience. And the team have done a really good job of getting it out of the lab process and into kind of the pre-market clinical trial phase process, um, which has been quite extensive. So they've taken a good year to do that. So I get to claim the glory right at the end. And of course, chlorotoxin uh, CAR T is such an elegant molecule. I really hope that we can um, see that one through as well. All right. Now, at the moment, uh, 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 you can acquire all this for not very much. Your market cap's somewhere between 20 and 30 million US dollars. There are CAR T and NK cell uh, therapy plays uh, on NASDAQ and elsewhere, trading orders of magnitude higher than yours. What are investors getting in terms of the, the news flow that could help a re-rate in the second half of this year? So we hope to have the safety data from the CDH17 program uh, towards the back end of this year. And we really need to take this one quite slowly because it's the first time it's been tested in humans. Um, so we need to wait 35 days between each patient. And we, we have to go slow to move fast here in, in this particular program. So I'm really happy with that progress. But we also have pre-approval to move into phase two quite quickly um, if we deem that it's safe. Uh, so that's sort of the first piece of news. Uh, we'll have um, the phase 1B readouts for the NK core NK platform um, probably December, early January is what we're thinking. Um, and the chlorotoxin program, we're likely to have some data at the end of the year. Right. Um, I ran the numbers a while ago. If you look across the ASX um, uh, listed companies involved in life sciences, around about 10% of the CEOs are women. Um, so uh, relatively high by uh, global standards, still low compared to, um, uh, to, to some other industries. How does it feel to be another lady running a, a life sciences company in Australia? It feels great. It feels really good. Um, I think I haven't really thought about it too much. Um, I just really want to make sure that we get the job done and, and deliver shareholder value to our amazing shareholders. Um, but I think it's good to be part of a minority um, in this space and hopefully we have a very loud voice. <laughs> Rebecca McWalter, thank you for joining us to share uh, the exciting uh, news that's coming up for Chimeric Therapeutics. Thank you so much for having me.